I'm Dr. Weiner. I'm a veterinarian from Orlando, Florida, and I noticed that there was a, a new wave of people interested in uh, these non-anesthetic dentals uh, where their dogs can get their teeth cleaned uh, without the risks of, of anesthesia. Uh, and I want to talk about really what you get with a non-anesthetic dental versus what you get uh, with a full uh, dental under anesthesia. So uh, really it's it's about risk versus benefit. Uh, do the risks of anesthesia outweigh the benefit uh, of a good thorough oral exam with oral x-rays, multi-surface cleaning and polishing, uh, and deep under the gum cleaning? Uh, or do the benefits of, of avoiding anesthesia outweigh the risk of potentially missing significant underlying uh, periodontal disease, which is disease of, of the uh, tissues and structures under the gums? Uh, and provide false sense of security for the owners. Um, so let's let's uh, kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, now I know a veterinarian who uh, does recommend non-anesthetic dentals for uh, select clients and, and certain patients. Um, and and what her um, kind of uh, analysis is uh, for non-anesthetic dentals is that. Um, some patients are a little too risky for anesthesia, so this way they can still get their teeth cleaned. Um, it's cheaper, you know, it's more cost um, saving for, for the owner. Um, but also, there are some owners that just will not commit to, to anesthesia uh, because it's just too scary. Uh, so they'll go for these instead. Uh, and sometimes when they're, they get their dogs back and their teeth are are white and their breath smells a little bit better, they start appreciating uh, the importance of dental health. Um, now, sometimes the uh, hygienist uh, go, doing these, um, these non-aesthetic dentals do find uh, some loose teeth or, or some other lesions, maybe like fractured tooth, um, and they will let the uh, veterinarian know about that. Um, if the owners, uh, and this is per the doctor who, who recommends these, um, she says if the owners have at least tried the non-anesthetic dental uh, first and they realize a it, the mouth is worse than, uh, or you know, the disease is worse than what we originally thought, uh, then they'll be more inclined to going straight for the, um, for the anesthesia dental at that point, uh, whereas they wouldn't have done that without at least trying it with that, without anesthesia first. Um, now, she also says that uh, some owners, like I said, just can't afford um, the full evaluation of anesthesia free, uh, and this is better than nothing. Um, now, you know, at least it's it's removing some plaque. Now, I have some uh, thoughts on on those, and and here are my my kind of counter arguments for those. Now. Animals going under anesthesia uh, or undergoing anesthesia free dentals, um, the animals don't really know what's going on. Uh, they don't understand why someone is, sharp, is sticking these sharp, pointy objects in their mouth and, and expecting them to stay still. Um, you can't say, oh, this is, this is going to pinch or, or, you know, calm down, it's okay. I mean, you can, but they're not really going to understand as much. Um, so they really don't understand the meaning behind you know why someone who might be unfamiliar to them is holding them down uh and sticking these you know loud sharp metal objects in their mouth um and i think it's a little unreasonable to expect them to sit still for that um and of course the restraint uh could be traumatic and stressful for them too uh not only the you know, the dental itself but the stra restraint can be um, now, some anesthesia-free dentals, actually, uh, some dogs do get sedation if they're not sitting still. Um, now, with sedation, you don't have uh, a protected airway like you would uh, with an endotracheal tube under general anesthesia, uh, but we've removed that uh, good gag reflex that uh, would prevent them from um, ingesting uh, or inhaling all the water that's coming at them during the procedure. Um, and then they might not be having, might, might not be protected uh, or um, connected to the, um, and all the anesthesia monitoring equipment that, or the vital monitoring equipment that we usually would during full anesthesia. 
Um, so is it really safer with all those things uh, under consideration? I don't think so. Um, now, let's say we have the world's most cooperative dog that does not need any anesthesia. Um, and he just sits in the hygienist's lap while she's scaling uh, his teeth. Um, they are still only going to be cleaning the very outside uh, surface of the teeth. They really can't get on the inside um, with the dog awake, no matter how good the dog is, or, or on the tops of the teeth, or under the gum line. Um, now, under the gum line is where most of the disease is. Um, so if, if that's not cleaned, then we're not really doing much of a service. Um, there's still going to be a lot of disease and inflammation um, that is left behind. Uh, and now the owners might have a false sense of, of hope or a false sense of security, um, thinking that their teeth are, are clean and now they're healthy. Um, the thing is, clean and healthy are, are not necessarily the same. So um, clean does not mean healthy. So... Um, as far as the anesthesia goes, yes, of, of course, there are some downsides of anesthesia. Um, it is more expensive for the owners, uh, and that's something that uh, some owners um, have trouble getting past. Um, but also, uh, you do get what you pay for. So, you know, with more expensive uh, treatment uh, plan, you, you do get more bang for your buck. You get more benefit. Um, and more thorough evaluation of the mouth and the uh, state of disease, um, and you can we can do more about it, um, which makes your pet uh, in, you know improve quality of life, makes it more comfortable, um, and can decrease the risk of other uh, diseases that dental disease can predispose them to. There are risks of anesthesia, uh, no matter how routine the procedure is. Uh, seemingly normal pets can sometimes have these tragic responses to a commonly used uh, drug without any warning, uh, but that's very, very rare. Um, and again, statistics don't mean anything to the individual, um, but uh, I always tell my clients, yes, there is a risk, and we do everything we can to minimize that risk as much as possible. Um, and that means making them as healthy as possible before the procedure. So you know, do a full exam, make sure they're up to date on their vaccines, um, if they have any other underlying conditions, um, make sure that those are well regulated or, or if we can cure them first uh, before we go under anesthesia, that would be ideal. Um, when they can't be cured, um, we have to just get them regulated and monitored uh, very closely. If the pet is a high risk of anesthesia but has really severe dental disease, um, that is impacting the quality of life. We just have to do a risk versus benefit analysis um, to and take all that under consideration. So, um, just because the dog is old and, and has you know some other issues does not necessarily mean it has to just suffer with its bad teeth and its, um, um, bad dental disease um, because that is uncomfortable. Uh, even if they're still eating and they don't really complain about it, and this is a, a big point. Just because they're not complaining about it um, and they're chewing fine doesn't necessarily mean it's not bothering them or it doesn't mean that they're not um, getting predisposed to other issues or they're, um, the bacteria and the, all the inflammatory reaction, uh, inflammatory mediators in their mouth aren't going into their bloodstream. Uh, so that is very, very important. Um, so I think dental medicine and, and or dental health and veterinary medicine is extremely mm. underappreciated. Uh, um, and that really needs to be uh, addressed a little bit more. So again, during um, anesthesia, we try and minimize uh, anesthesia time, which lowers risk. Uh, we take pain management very seriously, uh, which lowers the uh, amount of anesthetic drugs we can use, that we need to use, uh, which also lowers risk. Um, and we just monitor very, very closely. Um, which we would do anyway. So um, the benefits of um, a general anesthesia during a dental is it's less stress for the pet. We're not having to restrain them. Um, it's painless. They don't feel any pain when they're under anesthesia. Um, and I'm sure when you go to the dentist, sometimes I'm sure you know sometimes that it hurts. And uh, But you understand what's going on. Uh, and like I said before, they, they really don't uh, understand that. So. Uh, if we can do it in a pain-free, stress-free way, um, that's really better for everyone, um, especially the pet. Also, uh, under anesthesia, they have an endotracheal tube, uh, which has a little uh, cuff at the end, which protects their airway. Uh, so as we're doing dentals, 
there's a lot of fluid, lots of water uh, flushing through their mouth. Um, and if that um, goes down the, the trachea, it can go into the lungs, and then you can uh, get an aspiration pneumonia, um, which can be very bad. They can have some serious health conditions. Um, it could even be fatal. So that's why having that airway is so important, or having that airway protected. Uh, is so important. Uh, also, we have a you know more thorough uh, oral exam. You can see all the surfaces of the teeth. You can uh, probe them to see how many um, you know if there are any gingival pockets, uh, meaning kind of dead space uh, in the uh, gums. Um, and you can uh, you know take your time to have that mouth open to really get a good look in there. Um, we could also take dental x-rays. Uh, like I said before, most of the disease is under the gum line um, and a lot of it you cannot see with the naked eye. So uh, any bone uh, disease uh, that holds the teeth in place um, or disease of the roots of the teeth, uh, you're not going to see that um, without x-rays and you cannot do x-rays without them being completely under anesthesia. So uh, without anesthesia, you're going to miss a lot of things. Um, that can potentially um, get worse if left untreated um, and that can, like I said, um, impact their quality of life. With all that information, you can make a more targeted uh, treatment approach that can um, be most beneficial for them, you know, addressing the true disease that's, that's actually there. Um, and then we can polish all and scale all surfaces of the teeth, get under that gum line. Um, and that's really what you need to um, to do to resolve that gingivitis and the dental disease. So um, the key uh, takeaway points, uh, although there is some risk of anesthesia, um, anesthesia does allow a more complete and accurate assessment of the level of disease, uh, including what cannot be seen with the naked eye. Uh, a more thorough cleaning in a pain-free and stress-free way, like I said, uh, and a great understanding of what treatments, uh, if any, need to be recommended in the greatest interest of the pet's health. So I hope that helps uh, make your decision. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, talk to your veterinarian. Um, and I uh, wish you the best of luck. Take care. Bye. Please like us and subscribe for more fascinating dog discoveries. Mm -hmm.